Purdue Fresh Chicken Leg Quarters, only $1.59 per pound. Fresh blueberries, one pint, just $3.99, saving you $3. Hellman's mayonnaise, hot price, just $5.99 for the general vegetarian cereal, only $5.49. $2.66 on Ocean Spray Cranberry Juice, only $4.99 for a 64-ounce bottle. Visit our website at www.marketplace.pm for more weekly specials. You're watching Bermuda Tonight. It's Tuesday, February the 12th, 2019. I'm Diane Brewer, and thank you for joining us. A police inspector goes on trial in the Supreme Court on a charge of causing grievous bodily harm to a motorcyclist while driving in Hamilton Parish on September 19, 2017. The Crown, in its told a jury, the actions of Inspector Barry Richard changing injuries to the victim. More in this report. Prosecutors say Bermuda Police Service Inspector Barry Richards was distracted on his cell phone and did not have a clear line of sight, causing a collision at the juncture of My Lord's Bay Road and North Shore Road. They say the victim, Mr. Ronde Wilson, suffered life-changing injuries, including multiple fractures as a result. Richards is charged with causing grievous bodily harm to Ronde Wilson by driving without due care and attention on September 19, 2017, in Hamilton Parish. He denies the single count on the indictment. The first eyewitness, a minibus tour operator and former policeman Joel Cassidy told the court he was overtaken by two motorbikes at a high rate of speed on the bend past Sleepy Hollow traveling west. Ahead, he observed one of the bikes strike the passenger side of a car while the other went behind the vehicle. He approached the victim and noticed he was unconscious and wasn't breathing, then asked a woman nearby to phone 911. Mr. Cassidy says he thought it was a hit and run as he didn't see the car in the area, but later recognized it on an embankment 75 yards away from the crash site. He says he went to see if the driver was okay and saw Richards in the vehicle talking on his police radio, which fell out of his hand. During cross-examination by defense lawyer Mark Daniels, Mr. Cassidy agreed that he said to Richards, quote, when those bikes overtook me, it shocked me. Charles Jeffers testified to traveling one car behind Richards on the day. He recalled the car indicating to turn right on My Lord's Bay Road, proceed to turn, then hesitate and accelerate, stating, quote, as though he was trying to avoid something. He added, everything happened so quickly. He said it seemed he was in two minds. Do I stop or do I go? He observed the motorcyclist hit the car, go airborne and land in the middle of the road. A third eyewitness, Dale Fox, told the jury he was traveling slightly behind the victim on his motorbike and overtook the minibus going, he says, no more than 60 kilometers per hour. They continued west with Mr. Wilson riding in the inner lane close to the sidewalk when suddenly a car came into their path. He says the bike struck the silver car car along the left-hand fender. He managed to avoid the car. Mr. Fox testified to parking his bike, then observed the driver involved in the collision head down towards the bushes on an embankment. He said, quote, he was out of it. He was in shock while he sat in the car about five feet in front of the hedge. Mr. Fox said Richards asked him what had happened and to check to see if the guy was okay. Emergency personnel later arrived on the scene and Mr. Cassidy said he saw the victim breathing once again. The jury were shown CCTV footage of the collision several times throughout the proceedings today. The trial continues. Jasmine Patterson reporting for Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thanks, Jasmine. In other news, reports that the government has paid out settlements to dozens of people pepper sprayed during that infamous protest outside of Parliament is not sitting well with the MP Michael government. Dunkley condemned the decision and called for government to have a rethink and defend its position in court. In this case, 26 people had a complaint dismissed, and now government believes we should pay them out. While some have welcomed the government's decision to offer financial settlements to some 26 people who were pepper sprayed by police nearly three years ago, Michael Dunkley, the premier at the time, is slamming the government decision. Um, some in the community might say that it's outrageous. Um, you know, to hear the news reports and to be confirmed by a government spokesperson that uh, 26 individuals, I believe, who made a complaint to the Police Complaints Authority, um, and the Police Complaints Authority, basically, in my words, from what I'm informed, has dismissed the complaint, to find out that those individuals now um, are being paid off 
by the government um, is um, lacking the transparency that is required in a situation like this. A situation in which Mr. Dunkley believes the government must be fully transparent. A government spokesperson noting the terms of the settlements, which we understand to be between five to eight thousand dollars each, are confidential, and said that paying off the pepper spray victims was more cost effective than having the matter heard in court, where government could have stood to pay out triple the cost in compensation. However, it's the view of the former premier that the government should not offer any settlements and instead defend its position in court. Um, I would suggest that if if it would proceed along the path of judicial review, that government has every opportunity to win that review. This sets a precedence. It sets a real deep precedence. A precedent, says Mr. Dunkley, whereby anyone in future can claim government wrongdoing and be entitled to a payout without having to take their case to court. And Troy, I don't believe this is the first time it's happened in recent me memory. I think it happened um, some months ago with a former premier and his threatened legal action against the Ministry of Health specifically. And that was settled out of court with the private and confidential clause. As you are aware, there are still questions surrounding your role as the premier at the time during the incident. Did you have anything to do with the police decision to deploy the pepper spray? I will repeat what I've said all along, and it is the absolute truth, no. I'm happy to answer that question over and over and over again. Uh, I will be very uh, careful about what I say uh, to your broadcast tonight for the simple reason is that the uh, Joint Select Committee of the House of uh, Assembly and the Senate uh, has not reported yet, and I don't want to prejudice that report because I have been uh, interviewed by them. I will speak in more detail once the report is released, but I had nothing to do with that. That's what I've said from the very beginning, and that is a fact. The images of the clash between the protesters and the police of December 2, 2016, remain fresh in his mind, repeating that he remains disturbed and upset by those who were put in harm's way Mr. Dunkley still believes that some protesters were put into battle. And I believe that uh, many of the individuals who were there were pushed to come out um, because those uh, who didn't want to see the airport be debated in the House did all they could to, to launch a division in the community uh, to stop it going through. The National Security Minister, Wayne Keynes, has said he is unable to comment on the settlements, while a National Security spokesperson only adding that the government had reached an amicable conclusion with the applicants. Tarai Trott reporting for Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thanks, Tarai. Well, coming up, more news and the latest from AccuWeather headquarters. Stay with us. Toyota Rush, Bermuda's biggest SUV with seven seats. There's always plenty of room. Available at Bermuda Motors. You can count on us. Potatoes, all varieties, $3.99 for a five pound bag. Fresh ground beef, all size packages, just $2.99 per pound. Saving a dollar. Hot price, old time split top wheat bread, only $3.99 for a 22 ounce loaf. Select varieties of Armor Hammer laundry detergent, just $9.99 for a 75 ounce bottle. Huggies pull ups, all sizes for boys and girls, only $14.99. All stores open Monday through Saturday until 10 p.m. and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count at Argus, our interest is you, each of you. Around here, we know that when two people seem the same, they can have very different insurance needs for their health, home, work, and future. Which is why we take the time to get to know you as an individual, so we can provide insurance coverage that fits your life. Because after all, our interest is you. Welcome back. Nothing more than proposals that will have to be discussed and not any attempt to usurp the authority of the islands to municipalities. So says Walter Raban, the minister responsible for the corporations of Hamilton and St. George's with respect to two suggestions arising out of the 2018 consultation on the future of St. George's and Hamilton. Gary Moreno explains. 
The two main proposals arising from the 2018 consultation could see the corporations of Hamilton and St. George's either being turned into quangos and remaining corporate bodies, but with government assuming oversight for key initiatives. The other option would result in the corporations being dissolved and bringing their functions fully under government. These proposals, Home Affairs Minister Walter Raban maintains, are geared to infrastructure, amenities and activities for both municipalities. Changes which, if implemented, will involve more at a time when revenue earning is not what government is already putting that money into St. George and has made commitments already to advancing a sewage and water treatment facility. And we are doing the same for the whole country. So the budgets around infrastructure will be a part of the national budget, which in a sense, from if you talk about economies of scale, will uh, be more affordable for the country, but also for the respective municipalities as well. So where will that money come from and how much will it be? Our government already commits considerable amount of money to the wider capital budget of the country. Last year that was around $60 million. So with, the, with a change of relationship, both Hamilton and St. George will benefit from that considerable amount of resources that's applied for the whole country. Right now, because both are governed by independent acts, the government cannot engage with the same of the national budget, which will be revealed come February 22nd, may be allocated to these projects. Well, the minister was somewhat guarded in his response. Right now, we're going through a process of assessing what that's going to look like over time. Um, but we're confident that that can be easily handled with the government's existing and future priorities. Minister Raban was, however, more forthcoming on the reasons government is seeking greater, if not total, control of the corporations. As he put it, this all stems from the fiasco involving the failed Parleville Hotel project and another involving the controversial Hamilton waterfront development. It might be said that that is the case. I think that we understand from both of those situations that a better approach needs to be taken and that, particularly with Hamilton, that is... And if one argues that they have had the sole jurisdiction over those matters as a result of being municipalities where part of Hill Park and also the waterfront were their responsibility, they have not necessarily been handled in the best way. But the central government certainly can, as we've shown with our development of the dockyard, can handle the, the management and development of these attributes in the best interest of the whole country. There were significant cost overruns in the development of the dockyard. The dockyard has paid for itself with the enormous commercial and visitor activity that has been attracted to dockyard with that investment. Gary Moreno, reporting for the Bermuda Broadcasting News. Meanwhile, Hamilton Mayor Charles Gosling says while the proposals are out to be put for further consultation, the fact that they're even being considered is news to him. It was a complete total surprise. Uh, we have, during the two meetings, uh, one meeting with, with, with each minister to uh, sort of uh, um, present our initial thoughts on, on the um, changes within the municipality. We've been looking at the uh, uh, voters' rights and the rights of, of, of ratepayers in the city and stuff like that, neither of which are, are addressed in, in, in this particular issue. And if there had been indeed proper consultation, I think they should have said at that time, that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at these particular changes. And the, 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 the lack of sharing any of the information on, on, on their part with us, I, I think just shows completely um, how completely naked their, their argument is and then how it just wouldn't stand up in, in, in front of any, um, any considered um, uh, response. How do you see this action? There was some are saying that it's, an, op it's a, an effort to usurp both corporations for government benefit. Oh, I, I would uh, very, very much so. I mean, it, it's, 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 it's micro, macro management. <laughs> Um, you already have a minister that has not only the the uh, the right to um, to set the agenda for all the committees and, and, and council meetings. You also have it where the um, uh, where the minister is able to approve or, or disapprove of any resolution that is passed by by either either council. I mean, how much more control do you actually need over over the um, 
uh, over e either municipality. So how does the corporation, um, let's talk specifically about Hamilton, intend to approach this matter? Well, I'm having a meeting with, 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 the, council, with the council tomorrow. Um, and, and I really don't want to put any, any words in, in their mouth. I, I try to encourage uh, conversation. Um, I, I, I believe in consultation with my fellow members. Yeah. And of course, that was Gary Morena reporting. Turning to weather news, another fine day today, but some rain later on Wednesday. Let's go to AccuWeather headquarters for the latest. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. Well, good evening, everybody. This AccuWeather forecast has been brought to us by the BFNM Insurance Group. We have some uh, decent and fair weather right now, but as we look west, our storm system that we've been watching all week long continues to approach from the west, and uh, it is going to be a significant rain producer for us. Uh, there may be even a about a 48. That's uh, off-on intervals of rain tied to this system. Have been a few showers well to the north. There is a front out in advance of this that is kind of backed almost into us from the northeast, but it will not move any closer. So we still have some breathing room. We're still fairly quiet. We have a light wind from the southwest only at around five knots. Because of that, the waves on the inside are uh, flat between a foot and nearly calm. On the outside, we do have three to five foot wave heights and uh, temperatures are around 68 degrees across the island right now. Now, as this next system draws near, we do expect the breeze to pick up and the waves will gradually increase. So a small craft warning begins Wednesday morning. It'll continue through the remainder of Wednesday, through Wednesday night, and through most of Thursday as well. Small craft warning ending Thursday evening when there will be some rain in the neighborhood. Wouldn't be surprised if it even gets extended beyond that by the Bermuda Weather Service. So we'll have to keep an eye on how they handle that. But uh, we do have a low tide at 727 p.m. tonight. Then the tide will come back in until around uh, just before 2 a.m. Uh, low tide at 832 Wednesday morning. Another high tide in the early afternoon around 207 p.m. on your Wednesday. Uh, the wind is going to begin to increase later on tonight. We'll get down to 64. Not as cool as previous nights. And tomorrow we're back up to 71. We'll still hold on to the dry weather for the daytime hours tomorrow, but the wind will create more waves and larger waves at uh, that. And uh, again, we're dealing with an increasing chance for showers eventually beginning tomorrow night and through Thursday and Friday, tapering off into the beginning of the weekend. So here comes our storm system. Uh, the recent front, that little boundary that almost made it in, pulls away. So it's at its nearest point, but the more concerning system rolls in from the west. And by Wednesday at 11 p.m., we expect to see some rain begin to break out. Uh, at least near the island to the west, and we'll begin to see the rain increase into the overnight hours Wednesday night, continuing through most of Thursday and off and on on Friday as well. Down into the Caribbean, we have some showers here and there in Jamaica and Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago as well. No tropical threats, but we are keeping an eye on another storm system, another area of low pressure that will be uh, approaching from the southwest near the end of our five-day forecast into next week. So we'll have to keep an eye on that, but it's not a tropical system. Uh, we do have some snow in into Toronto turning colder. New York City, a little less eventful after the wintry mix involving some ice this uh, Tuesday. Wednesday, cloudy but drier, 42. Boston, clouds, 47. Atlanta, very cool for them. Uh, showers into Miami. And in London, we're running a little mild and fairly quiet. Five-day forecast for us brings the rain in Wednesday night through Thursday. Friday, still unsettled. Showers exit early Saturday, and we're going to be fairly warm, still around 71 for a nicer weekend. So the timing of the rain works out okay because we dry out for most of the weekend. Back to you. AccuWeather was presented by BFNM Insurance Group. At the Bermuda Festival, there's something for everyone in 2019. From international acts, the Manhattan Transfer, and Shaka Khan, to Bermudians Heather Nova and Rebecca Falkenberry. Our plays include A Midsummer Night's Dream, Masterclass, and Nina Simone for Women. There's music for all, jazz, rock, classical, and even a cappella. And with modern dance and family entertainment, the list is complete. For tickets, visit PTIX or BermudaFestival.org. Celebrating the empowerment of women, she is art. It's time to get back down to business.
In the first season of The Breakdown, we helped you understand Bermuda's impact on the world. The world's risk capital. This could be where the job is. 75% in Bermuda. And the world's impact on Bermuda. It was like a trickle effect from the U.S. We lost 17% of our labor force. We tackled emerging technologies. Digital currency brings a lot of efficiency. Blockchains are blocks of information. Examined key concerns. Is this all about climate change? 8,500 people are diabetic based on the STEP survey. And connected the community to the issues impacting their future. I think it would be a positive for the island. It's just a matter of economics. And now we're back to do it again. Join me, Tony Waterman, for a brand new season of The Breakdown starting Thursday, February 21st at 8 p.m. on ZBM TV9. Let's Talk is back. The TV talk show hosted by Gary Marino airs live at 8 p.m. on Mondays. Real conversations with key figures in public life. Going beyond the sound bites to explore and contextualize current affairs. And there's lots to talk about. Jobs, tax reform, our changing economy, education, crime, and the environment. Discussing the issues that matter in depth and with personality. A new studio, a new look, or a new season. That's Let's Talk. Live Mondays at 8 p.m. on ZBM TV 9 and repeated at 7 a.m. on Wednesdays. And Sundays at 8 a.m. And you're watching the Tuesday edition of Bermuda Tonight. Opposition leader Craig Kanadier blasted government for what he calls the failure to heed the old adage about putting all your eggs being in one basket. As word comes that government is having a rethink on its proposed fintech hub, Mr. Kanadier spoke with Mike Sharp about his concerns. The OBA chief made the call once again for the government to set up a stimulus package. Yeah, well, I've been saying this over and over and over. Uh, that's going to move Mr. and Ms. Bermuda to the next level, move them out of the position that they are in, where they are seeing a country that is contracting. Uh, they are seeing that they are losing their jobs. They're being paid less. Uh, and because of that, there's less people here also on the island, so there's less money to go around. We have got to get this government to the point whereby it is putting a stimulus package together for the here and now. On the heels of news that the fintech hub has been put on hold, Mr. Kennedy said, I told you so. And he reflects on the different fintech plans. In 2017, um, the then opposition, uh, David Burt, said that Southside would be the Silicon Valley type place uh, where they were going to have this fintech hub. The next year following that, we were told by David Byrd at the time, now Premier, that well, they're scaling this uh, thing back in, and they believe that uh, uh, maybe it's too large to have a hub in Southside, but that we're going to now have it in a building, this fintech hub in a building within the city, making it smaller, starting out smaller, uh, and then growing. So we've been patient to understand and give him the latitude to get that done. Mm -hmm. Now we're hearing that um, <laughs> we're now scaling back even further, and the reason uh, for doing away with now the building that they have earmarked for the fintech hub is to be fiscally prudent. The opposition leader said that government must come up with a way to create jobs. You promised us and said that would be, there would be millions of dollars coming into the island from this fintech hub. You said that jobs would be created um, and that we would see these jobs created and every opportunity I've had in the House of Assembly, I've asked. How many jobs has fintech created thus far? We're now going on years and talking about fintech and we still do not see anything happening for Mr. and Ms. Bermuda. This should be concerning. And I'm Mike Sharp with Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thanks, Michael. Well, after this short break, Earl Basin will have all the latest sports news. Stay tuned. The Marketplace Food Court is you and your family's one-stop shop. Start your day at the breakfast bar with omelets made to order and traditional Bermuda codfish breakfast. The chefs will cook lunch and dinner to your liking, along with the salad bar, sandwich bar, sushi bar, and fruit bar, the Marketplace Food Court is your kitchen away from home. Every day is hassle-free with nutritious meals from the Marketplace Food Court. Visit us seven days a week. Homemade cooking, quality service, all at prices you can count on.
When it's happening now, you can't beat the immediacy of radio. A chance to hear the thoughts of acclaimed author. No matter where you are. I'm Darlene Livingston with Bermuda Broadcasting News. When events are spectacular, television is by far the best media platform. Why now this particular topic? For sports action, well, need we say more? Broadcast reporters put elected officials on the spot, keeping them honest and accountable to voters. And they can explain things in ways we all understand. Climbs up to 12.5%. Broadcast news is important. Wear your eyes and ears on the ground. I'm Jasmine Patterson, and thanks for joining us tonight. In good times and bad. Radio is your constant companion. On the big station, Power 95. And TV news is the news. Based on what you're saying. And Bermuda Broadcasting is your station. Turning to sports now, the Bermuda Football Association has announced the FA Challenge Cup date and time for a rematch. Another athlete has met the qualifying standard for the Carifta Games and a total of 217 goals were scored in Bermuda Netball Association's Senior League makeup matches. Earl Basin has it all and more in tonight's sports report. The Bermuda Football Association have announced the FA Challenge Cup match between St. David's and Southampton Rangers will take place right here tomorrow at the National Sports Center with a 7 p.m. kickoff. The Bermuda Football Coaches Association held its annual general meeting at the National Sports Center Pavilion last evening. During the meeting, the elections of officers for the 2019-2020 year was held, with incumbents standing for re-election returned to office. Three new members were elected by membership to the executive committee. Richard Todd returned unopposed in the president position. Additionally, Macy O'Dill, vice president, and Khomeini Tolbert, secretary, also returned to their roles as executive officers unopposed. Omar Shakir from the Pem Brook Hamilton Club was the sole nomination received to fill the role of treasurer after that position was vacated, while Dennis Brown, Larry Smith, and Derek Stapley were returned as executive members for another term. Joining the executive committee for the first time were Denver Seymour and Tracy Seymour from the Somerset Cricket Club. Isabel Dutronat competed in the BU David Hemery Valentine Invitational at the Boston University Track and Tennis Center. Dutronat won Heat 10 of the women's 3,000 meters. She finished 123rd overall out of 178 runners, clocking a time of 10, 21, 73. Dutronat's time sees her qualify for the women's 3,000 meters for the Carifta Games. Dutronat becomes the fifth athlete to meet the standard for 2019. Meanwhile, Caitlin Bob would represent Hartford during the Maryland Public Secondary School Athletic Association's 2A Central Regional Championships. Competing in the women's varsity 300 meters, Bob clocked a winning time of 42.56. Bob would also win the women's varsity 500 meters with a time of 119.39. Bob would lead off the Hartford Tech women's varsity 4x200 meter relay team that won in a time of 151.28. Bob would then run the anchor leg for the Hartford Tech women's 4x400 meter relay team that finished second with a time of of 42053 Bermuda is expected to announce the squad for the 2019 regional under 19 qualifiers as the journey for qualification to the 2020 ICC under 19 cricket world cup to be held in South Africa is underway in order to qualify for the world cup Bermuda will need to finish first in the Americas region ahead of Argentina USA Cayman Islands and Canada the American reaches qualifiers is scheduled to be played in Toronto between July 7th and July 19. The Bernard Park Courts was the scene of Bermuda Netball Association Senior League makeup matches last evening, where a total of 217 goals were scored on the night. Robin Hood would go down 51 22 in the opener to the Lindos Tigers. The Storm Lightning went down 59 22 to the Phoenix Heat. And the Storm Thunder defeated the North Village Daily Rams 40 23 in the final game of the evening. Bermuda's James Stout and his partner, Greg MacArthur, won the Squash Doubles Association's Baltimore Cup over top seeds Vane Baden from Switzerland and Colombia's Bernardo Samper. Stout and MacArthur won 3-1. They would win 15-12, 11-15, 15-10, 15-7 in the match that lasted 75 minutes. The My Bermuda House Bermuda Squash National Championships got underway inside the Bermuda Squash Rackets Association Club last evening. Day one saw a total of 17 matches 
years, with four of them needing five games to decide a winner. Hadley Farrah defeated Chris Scoba 11-7, 8-11, 5-11, 11-8, 11-9 in their men's open PSA round one match, while Tom Grindley defeated Greg Fitzgerald 7-11, 12-10, 10-12, 11-8, 13-11 in men's B action. During the veteran men's division, Colin Cooper defeated Patrick Neal 11-9, 8-11, 11-8, 5-11, 15-13, 11, and Colin Alexander defeated Craig Marshall 11-4, 6-11, 11-6-7-11-14-12. Two games took place at the National Sports Center in Bermuda Field Hockey Action over the weekend, with the Mixed B team defeating the Mixed A team 4-2 in one game. The other match will see a seven-goal thriller between the Mixed B team and the Bermuda Under-21 team, with the Mixed team winning 4-3. I'm Earl Baisden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. Well, thank you, Earl. That's our newscast. I'm Diane Brewer. Thanks for joining us. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Good night.